To say that the day Jane's mother died was a tragedy is a rude understatement. To Jane, her death felt like a poisonous dagger had been plunged deep into her heart and left there so that she could suffer while she still existed. Who might you ask is so heartless as to kill a poor farmer girl's mother? None other than the Duke of Falador, who so happens to possess dark and evil powers. It all started when the Duke fell in love with Jane's mother. On one of his inspections, as the newly appointed Duke, he noticed her, gobstruck by her angel-like features and unmatched grace. He tried to persuade her to leave her husband and child and become his mistress, promising her boundless wealth and an effortless life. But she refused profusely as she was unwaveringly loyal to her family and loved them dearly. She openly condemned the Duke and shamed him for his advances. The Duke, being an egoistic, narcissistic dictator, issued orders for her immediate capture on the grounds of her disloyalty to the kingdom. Jane remembers that day like it was yesterday. Only a young child of five years old at the time, she vividly remembers the guards barging into their humble farmhouse and escorting her mother to the Falador castle. She was then taken to a faraway dungeon. Her mother showed great composure, despite being horrendously aware of her inevitable fate. Her father had been out of town at the time selling his produce in the more lucrative markets of Varak, and when he received the news, his heart shattered into a million irreparable pieces, and he fell extremely ill, and has never fully recovered since. As if what the Duke had done wasn't bad enough, he also placed a powerful curse on all of Jane's mother's offspring. Because Jane's mother had been so vocal about her opposition to the Duke, he cursed her offspring to be silent for the rest of their lives. Jane, being an only child, felt the full wrath of the curse. And so we jump ahead to modern day as we take a peek into Jane's life as she matured into a lovely young lady of 22 years old, with strikingly similar features to her mother and a level of natural elegance that left onlookers in awe. My darling, have you harvested the cabbage? The markets will be opening soon. After her mother's death and her father's subsequent illness, she had learned everything there was to know about the ways of the land and was renowned for the quality of her harvest. She signals to her father that she had prepared the cabbage and was headed to market. My dear, I'm so proud of what a wonderful young lady you have grown up to be. And I'm sure your mother would be too. Oh, what I would give to hear your sweet voice just once more. Take care, my love. May your eyes see only good. May your heart feel only pleasure. She kissed her father, then set out on her way towards the market. The trip to the market was a long but relatively uneventful one. While she walked, she liked to imagine that she was talking to the nature around her. She had many interesting discussions with the trees on the path and was always amused by the river's jokes. They always seemed to have good flow. A deadly plague had purged the kingdom a few years prior and so the population was still recovering. Those left were wary about leaving their homes, and so the once bustling towns were deserted and eerie. Jane finally arrived at the marketplace. A few sellers were standing around waiting for customers, but other than that, the market was also quite empty. Jane made her way to her favorite spot, which incidentally was also her father's favorite and she had fond memories of helping her father sell their produce as a young child there. Just as she got settled, she noticed a young man approaching her. Excuse me, are you Jane? Yes, she nods. 
I've come a long way for your cabbages. If what I heard was true, they are the sweetest and most flavorful in all the land. She smiles shyly as she is taken aback by the charisma and eloquence of the young man. I would like to purchase all your cabbages and ask if it's possible to place an order for 50 more. She nods again and sells the cabbages for 10 gold pieces each. That's lovely, she thought to herself. I can go home early today and spend time with my father. Her father had been particularly unwell lately and she liked to hurry back to spend time with him. Ma'am, is it possible for me to accompany you to pick up the rest of the cabbages? She nods to him and together they make their way out of the market and towards the farm. They walk in silence for a bit until the young man clears his throat. <clears throat> I've heard about what happened to you and I can't imagine what you've been through. My father recently died to the plague and life has never been the same since. She gives him a look of empathy. Another long pause and he continues. That river is so nice, it always waves. Jane couldn't help herself and smiles. Not sure about those posts though, I'm still on the fence about them. But that boulder definitely rocks. She laughed heartily at his jokes and they finally arrive at the farmhouse. As she steps in, she notices her father coughing aggressively and the doctor near him. She rushes to her father's side. She desperately looks at the doctor. The doctor looks back at her with worry and distress in his eyes.